Hey, welcome to our lesson on similar polygons. Similar polygons are corresponding. Uh, similar polygons have their angles, their corresponding angles. Let me try this again here. Similar polygons, corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding sides are proportional. What does proportional mean? Well, if we look at corresponding sides, 2 over 4, and I went from here to here, 3 to 6, One to two, and the last one, five to ten. Proportional. That means they all, all the sides, all corresponding sides from the, the left figure to the right figure, they all have a ratio of one over two. Uh, if you reduce 2 over 4, 3 over 6, and 5 over 10, that gives you 1 over 2. So, that's what it means for corresponding sides to be proportional. And we know that all corresponding angles in the diagram are congruent. Because of the congruent marks that are shown in the picture. The symbol for similar figures is this. So, in our situation we would use that symbol to write a similarity statement. And I still have the same pictures from the left side. Looking at the figure on the left, I'm just saying DEFG is similar to, now I went D to E to F to G. I have to make sure that I go R to U to T to S. R U, T, S. So this is our similarity statement. The next example here asks for a statement of proportionality. Statement of proportionality just says D, E over top of R, U. Is equal to E, F over UT that's also equal to um, I don't want to say RS on top because RS has always been on bottom the right figure has always been on bottom and the left figure has always been on top in this statement of proportionality and GF ST I'm going to put those backwards from what I said. But that would be your statement of proportionality. I would like you to determine if the figures are similar, and if they are similar, write a similarity statement. Now, if you're looking here, you don't have enough information because um, you don't know anything about their angles. So let me go ahead and put that in. And you can go ahead and start. Pause the video. Check your solution when you're finished. Okay. Determine if this, the figures are similar. If you look, all corresponding angles are congruent. First step. Now, 6 goes with 5. So 6 over 5. 4.5 goes with... I've already messed up, haven't I? 6 does not go with 5. 7.5 goes with 5. Now you might ask, can I write it as 5 to 7.5? Well, yeah, you could, but if you look at these two sides here, 6 and 4, 
and 7.5 came from the left figure, and it's on top. 6, which comes from the left figure, has to be on top. If 5 went on bottom over here, and it's on top from the right figure, 4 has to go on top from the right figure. So, you just need to make sure you keep things in order, figuring out which one you're going to use. Are you going to use the ones um, on top for the left figure, or the ones on top from the right figure? So, 4.5 on top, 3 on bottom, and 12 on top, 8 on bottom. So if we look there, we know these ones here on the bottom right, 12 over 8, divide each one by 4, you should get 3 over 2. And the bottom left there, 6 over 4, divide each one by 2, you should get 3 over 2. So far it's looking good because we have 3 over 2 and we have 3 over 2. Now the other ones with decimals we have to um, think for a minute. Um, you should know that 2.5 goes into both of those numbers. If you didn't, you could move the decimal one place to the right and one place to the right. And so that leaves you with 75 and 50. And you know that 25 goes into both of those. 25 goes into 75 three times. 25 goes into 50 twice. So far we have the same. Now let's look at 1.5 and 3. I know 1.5 goes into 4.5 three times, and 1.5 goes into 3 twice. So therefore, we have all four corresponding sides are proportional. The last part, write a similarity statement. We will just say A, B, C, D is similar to, we started here and worked our way, start here, K-N-L-M, K-N-L-M. This is our similarity statement. And that's how you determine the figures are similar and writing your similarity statement. Um, there's two questions here that say write the scale factor of and then they tell you what you're supposed to do. Remember that in order for these to be similar, they have to have congruent angles, and their sides have to be proportional. But I believe if we look at these numbers here and compare them to these numbers in the previous example that we had, we have the same numbers. So we've already proved that these two these two figures are similar. Now we need to determine what the scale factor is. Uh, what is the scale factor? What is the scale factor? Well, if we look here, since we know that they're similar, definition of scale factor? It's the ratio of the lengths of the two corresponding sides. Ratio of lengths of two corresponding sides. So, let me go ahead and move that out of your way. Now let's look here. Ratio of the lengths of two corresponding sides. Well, let's pick two corresponding sides. Six. Is it from ABCD or KNLM? Well, six is from ABCD. Now, 6 corresponds to 4, which is from KNLM. Now, if we want to do this, instead of writing the word 2, we could write it like that, or we could use the colon to represent 2. Now, the scale factor, we don't want to leave it as 6 to 4. We should reduce it. 3 to 2 is the scale factor. And that would be of A, B, C, D to K, N, L, M. 
Now down here below, when we say KNLM to ABCD, well, that just switches the numbers around. We would pick four from KNLM, six from ABCD, and then reduce. And so that scale factor of KNLM to ABCD is true to three. That's why it's real important for you to pay attention to which one is going first. KNLM goes first here, and ABCD goes first here, so that's the number that goes first. And then you can figure out what number comes after. So if we look at this situation, this situation tells us that these two figures are similar. Okay? I don't want to put that equal sign there. That's not an equal sign. It's actually supposed to be two underlines happen to look like an equal sign when I got finished. And I did not want that to resemble a congruent symbol. So that's why I erased them. JKLM is similar to WXYZ. So since they're similar, corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding sides are proportional. Find the value of A and B. How do we find the value of A and B? Well, we know 18 over 6 is equal to, since 18 went on top, 3B minus 6 goes on top. And 5 went on bottom, just like 6 goes on bottom. <laughs> and we go from here. You could take 5 times 18 and 6 times 3B minus 6. You could do it that way. But also, let's use your head. Let's use your noggin and realize that 18 over 6 reduces to 3 over 1. And I like using 3 over 1 better because it is a smaller number to work with which makes calculations go by a little bit quicker in your head. So, this is where we're at. So now let's go ahead and solve this out. 3 times 5 is 15. And 1 times everything on top. We don't have to really just... We can distribute the 1, but it doesn't change anything. So solve. Add 6 to both sides. Add 6 to both sides. 21 is equal to 3B. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. B is equal to 7. And does that make sense? If we plug 7 in for B, 3 times 7 is 21, minus 6, which is 15. If I compare 15 and 5, doesn't that have a ratio the same as 18 over 6 does? Yes, it does. So that's the reason why that makes sense. Now, I would like you to try to find letter A on your own. I will work it out. You can pause the video here and then play it and make sure that your answer matches mine. All right, so you're going to be finding letter A. When you find letter A, um, 18 was on top. Four should also, or 14 should also go on top. Six was on bottom, so A plus two should go on bottom. And so from here, three gets multiplied by A plus two. 1 gets multiplied by 14. 1 times 14 is 14. Distribute. Should give you 3a plus 6. And from here, let's solve. Subtract 6 from both sides. 3a is equal to 8. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. a is equal to 8 thirds. So, you found A, you found B, 
and you have used similar polygons for that. As they say in the cartoons, the end. See you in the funny papers.